Fred Hartman Bridge. It's the longest cable state bridge in Texas. Now this beautiful bridge connects two cities, Baytown and Laporte. It's the only way to go to the next city. That's how important this bridge is. Now, the book of Revelation is like this bridge. This beautiful book connects you, your present, to the future. It's the most complete book about what will happen in the future. That's how important this book is. And today, we will continue learning eschatology, the theological term used by everyone to study the last days. Now, previously, we learned that if you are here in 2023, the rapture will come next. And then, the seven-year tribulation period. Now, the Bible defines this period as a time when God's patience towards sinful people has run out. And He now pours out His wrath by breaking seven seals, blowing seven trumpets, and smashing seven bowls aside from inserting a few significant events. Now, in the last video, we described the horrifying events in the first three and a half years. Today, we will finish describing the second three and a half years of the tribulation. So, are you ready to explore the bridge called Revelation to know the future? The goal of this video is to rapidly describe these different events, not to go to them individually. The sixth trumpet is the last event in the first half of the tribulation. Now, before the seventh trumpet is blown and the second half of the tribulation, two significant events will happen first. Numero uno is the rebuilding of the temple. Now, although some believe that the temple is symbolic of God's people during the tribulation, there are several indications that the passage refers to a literal rebuilding of the Jewish temple. Now, before giving you proof, Revelation 11.1 1 says, Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. Now, what's the deal about measuring the temple? Measuring symbolizes the preservation and protection of those who worship God. But after several months, this same temple is mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and chapter 12, verse 11, wherein the Antichrist will desecrate and put an idol in it and proclaim himself to be God, proving that it's a literal temple. Now, the second event is the arrival and death of the two witnesses. Now, who are these two witnesses? Some speculate they are Enoch and Elijah, or Moses and Elijah. But the issue here is that the Bible did not specify their identities. Now, others say they are not literal individuals, but symbolic of the church and the Word of God. But the fact that they die and are resurrected points to actual people. So what will they do during the tribulation period? Revelation 11 describes them as prophesying or proclaiming God's Word against the wicked for 1,260 days. Now, if you divide 1,260 by 30 days or one month, it's exactly 42 months or three and a half years. Now, the question is, did they minister during the first three and a half years of the tribulation period or the second three and a half years? It's not clear. Now, they will do supernatural miracles like preventing rain, turning water into blood, and bringing plague whenever they want. Also, fire will destroy those who will try to harm them. But eventually, the beast 
will kill them and display their corpses in the street. And people worldwide will celebrate by exchanging gifts with each other, just like Christmas. But after three and a half days, God will resurrect them and they go to heaven in a cloud while their terrified enemies stared at them. While this was happening, a strong earthquake will kill 7,000. It's a number which means many, many people. Now, after the death of these two witnesses, the seventh trumpet was blown and there was worship and a woe. Revelation 11, 15 to 19 describes worship in heaven while simultaneously there's woe on earth because this seventh trumpet opened the seven dreadful bowls introduced by flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. My friend, unspeakable suffering awaits you if you are living during this time. That's why I implore you to turn to Jesus right now by accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you are ready to do that, write accept in the comment section below and I will contact you. But before God shatters the first bowl, some events such as Israel's persecution will happen. Now this intense persecution is spearheaded by the dragon or Satan himself. Revelation 12, 17 says, Then the dragon became furious with the woman or Israel and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring. Since then, Satan has been trying to destroy Israel for a long time, from Haman during the time of Esther to Hitler. Now, how do we know it's Satan? Revelation 12, 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan. That's the word Satan there. And deceiver of the whole world. Now, while the persecution of Israel is going on, the unholy trinity will now come into focus. Now, who are they? The beast, pictured figuratively as a beast with ten horns and ten crowns, the dragon or the antichrist, and the false prophet. Now, this counterfeit trinity will require all people to worship the dragon and the first beast or else death. Also, the beast causes all to be marked on the right hand or the forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark of the beast, 666. Six, six. The next thing that will happen is the death of the 144,000 witnesses. These are the 144,000 Hebrew witnesses we already met in chapter 7. But here, Revelation 14.1 says, Then I looked, and behold, on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Now, some interpret the phrase Mount Zion literally, which means that they survived the seven-year tribulation and now worshiping God on literal Mount Zion at the second coming. But it is better to take the phrase Mount Zion figuratively as referring to, to heaven because if you look at the phrases thrown before the four living creatures and before the elders in Revelation 14.3, it's describing heaven. In short, these 144,000 were martyred, just like the two witnesses. But you see, whatever interpretation you take, the 144,000 experience ultimate triumph because they are now with Jesus the Lamb, while evil people have been defeated. My friend, placing your faith in Jesus brings peace and eternal life at the end. But on the other hand, 
following your way might give you instant gratification but ultimately gets punishment. I implore you, my friend, accept Jesus before it is too late. Now, because people choose to shake their fists against God, God's wrath broke loose after the death of the 144,000. God's mercy has now reached its limit and he smashed the first bow. Result? Painful sores. Severe, ugly sores. Revelation 16, 2 says, So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. Have you had a mouth blister that you can hardly talk or eat? This is worse because it's all over your body. Nobody can touch you. You cannot walk because the soles of your feet will be in blisters. You cannot sit or sleep because you are full of sores. Not only that, but the original Greek word for this refers to an internal ulcer. Your internal organs are ulcerated. So my friend, do you still want to reject Christ? This is happening, God smashed the second bowl. Result, the death of sea water, like the sea water and every fish and living creature in there. Revelation 16, 3 says, the second angel poured out his bowl into the sea and it became like the blood of a corpse and every living thing died that was in the sea. Can you imagine the stench and poison it will produce? Now not only will they see the death of the salt water, but also the death of fresh water. Rivers and streams. Revelation 16 4 says, the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. So where will people get their drink? Now, while people's throats will be parched because the sea is dead and the fresh water is dead, their suffering will further intensify because of the fourth bowl, the scorching sun. The sun scorches people with fire. Revelation 16, 8 and 9 says, the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat. But the problem is they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues. Instead of repenting, they did not repent and give him glory. So God pours his fifth bowl full of his wrath, darkness, thick darkness. Revelation 16, 10 to 11 says, the earth was plunged into darkness and people gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God of heaven for their pain and sores. They did not repent of their deeds. You know, there is something about darkness that will play tricks on your mind. You cannot see your source. You cannot see any news because it's total blackout. No electricity, no cell phones, no nothing. But this is just a foretaste of what awaits those who keep rejecting Christ. Now, if you are wise, my friend, place your faith in Jesus right now. If you wish to do that, write accept in the comment section below and I will contact you. Now, here comes the next bowl. The Euphrates River dries up. Revelation 16, 12 says, the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up. Why? 
to prepare the way for the kings from the east and all the forces of the world that rebelled against God to rendezvous to fight against Jesus. This is what we call the Battle of Armageddon. Revelation 16, 14 adds demonic spirits going abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God, the Almighty. But before this battle of Armageddon happens, the last of the seven bowls will be poured out. A mega earthquake. It's not just a horrifying earthquake. Revelation 16, 17 to 21 describes flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth. And the city, that's Jerusalem, was split into three parts, and every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. And great hailstone, look at this, great hailstone, about 100 pounds each, fell from heaven on people. In short, a cosmic judgment that never happened before. Now after this cosmic judgment, then comes the great showdown, the second coming of Jesus. Now do you want to know the details? Come back for the next video. when I was a kid, I was on the floor writhing in pain and agony. Why? I just got electrocuted. But you see, my parents never failed to warn me about not putting any shiny stuff in the socket. But one day, I inserted a paper clip into it. Now, when my mom came to comfort me, I lashed out at her and said, Why did you let this thing happen to me? You don't love me. Poor mom, she got all the blame. Now, in the same way, people blame God because they were hurt. In fact, some even stopped believing in God already. The reality is that God loves you. That's why he gives all these warnings in the book of Revelation. See that warning? Just like that warning there. So that by responding positively, you will experience joy and peace forever with Him. Will you heed God's warning and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Now, if so, for the third time, write accept in the comment section below and I will contact you to ensure you understand the gospel's message. Will you do that right now?